If you're new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. From soaring mountains to hidden waterfalls and elusive wildlife to stunning sunsets, I'm excited to film each step of the way. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. So this area right here has some, some openings. There's water right down here. It's always good to have a good water supply nearby. And as you're walking through here, uh, you can hear a lot of hummingbirds kind of buzzing along. They have their you know, super high, fast wing speeds that fly by, as well as their little, little call that they make. So can you see the nest? If you were to just walk on by. Can you see it now? There it is. Super small, so the little young have already left. Which is nice to be able to get in nice and close here. Would have been cool to see the eggs, but I didn't want to disturb the process with the mom and the young. But look how hidden that is and the colors. Walking along this path, uh, we take it twice a day sometimes, three times a day. So as we're walking, you're always looking for movement. And I seen the mother just hovering around and I looked in, saw this little shape and uh, realized this is the nest. So it's those small little movements that you pick up uh, where you might be lucky into finding something. Now this is right along the middle of the branch, whereas I, I've seen other hummingbirds that are just kind of in the V of, of branches. And, and uh, yeah, so very happy to be able to spot this one. I've seen them in areas like here, and within a couple of weeks, it's gonna be hard to, to look in there and see anything. Can you see the nest? It's a lot harder to see later in the year, but right now, you can spot it. So the springtime's a great time to go around and check out where all the nests are. Now, when there are Cooper Hawks here, There'll be a lot of whitewash from them, you know, pooping above, splattering right down here. The mom will go out on some of the branches outside the nest while the younger inside, and this is where she'll poop. So there's nothing up in the nest right now. There's no whitewash. And in through here is really great spots for hummingbirds. There's enough area, enough skylight for them to fly out, go and get the food that they need to bring back to the nest. But this area is kind of nice and protected.
So over the past few weeks, I've been going out to this small hummingbird nest and watching the mom not only build it, but then raise her young in it. And take a look at how she is doing the finishing touches on her nest. She's grabbing spider webs, bringing them back to the nest, and she's kind of like weaving them and, and kind of needling them in place. So cool, she's using her long tongue as well. Now since hummingbirds work so fast in real time, I decided to slow things down to 120 frames per second so we can really watch her work. Can you spot her long tongue? So if I didn't mention before, this is an anise hummingbird. They can live up to 8.5 years. They're about 4 inches in length and weigh 0.1 to 0.21 ounces. Hummingbirds are the only birds known to fly backwards and their heart beats at 1260 beats per minute. I went back and filmed while it was raining and check out the size of the raindrop in comparison to the hummingbird. I hope they don't get migraines every time it rains. Ouch. Not too long after the eggs have hatched, the mother flies off to get some nectar or small insects for food and then comes back to the nest. I slowed this part down so you can see how she is feeding. Check it out, you can see her tongue again. Through my observations over the week and in past years, I noticed that it's about 20 to 30 minutes between feedings. Sometimes it's a little longer and other times it's shorter. After hatching, it's about 18 to 28 days before the baby hummingbirds are flying off on their own. All right, check this out. This is in real time. I'm not gonna lie. This does not look comfortable. And this is just a few days before they left the nest. So a lot of us like photographing hummingbirds and other birds in our backyard. So here I am, I got my garden in the back here, and there's birds, hummingbirds, all of that flying around. Now the problem that I think a lot of us face is how quick wildlife is. Even if you're predictable, like hummingbirds are, they come and go sometimes right to the exact same branch. So you can have your camera and everything set up, but they're so quick at taking off, coming back, that unless you hold down your trigger, just taking continuous shots, hoping to get it, to get the shot of when they take off or they land, you're gonna have a lot of images on your camera. But there's a function now uh, that has been implemented in cameras for a while now. I think Fuji and Olympus uh, have had this. Um, Nikon Z9 uh, just added it for uh, their camera and it's the uh, pre-release capture mode. It's for Nikon. For a Canon and Panasonic, it's the pre-burst, is what they call it. Sony, they call it predictive capture, which I don't think they have it on any of their uh, pro cameras. I think it's just their cell phone. But let me know in the comments uh, if you have a Sony and you notice it on your camera. I have a Sony uh, A7C and it does not have predict, predictive capture. Olympus calls it pro capture, and Fuji calls it pre-shot, and I think they have an ES afterwards, pre-shot ES, and that stands for the electronic shutter. So to set that up, uh, you might have to do a few things, and each camera is a bit different, uh, but I think they all follow the same sort of uh, steps. One, you need to be in a high burst setting, 
And so I'm not sure what it is for the Fuji film, but the Fuji won't work unless you're on the continuous high settings. You're also going to want to remove your mechanical shutter. It can only work with electronic shutter. So uh, be sure to check that out. If it's grayed out on your screen and you can't actually turn on you know, your pro shot or your pre-release capture setting, it's probably because you need to turn off or turn on other things in your camera. I'm gonna show you how the Nikon Z is set up and uh, you can follow me through on that one. What this essentially does is allows you to go back in time. It's a time traveling technique. So imagine uh, your, your camera set up on a tripod and you have a hummingbird in focus on a little branch, but you don't know when it's gonna fly off. It's making its noise and its call, that sort of thing. So you can either hold down the trigger and just take non-stop shots, but if you have pre-capture set up, you can load the buffer by pushing the trigger finger halfway down, and until you see it fly away, you push down the trigger all the way, and it'll essentially go back in time and, and show you all of those photos of the hummingbird taking off and it's, it's so neat. Uh, if you don't see the hummingbird take off and you have your finger you know, pushed halfway down, it doesn't read and write anything, it just fills up your buffer. And I think there's a time limit too, depending on how fast your cards are. Uh, my card will allow me to load up the buffer up to 60 seconds. And then there'll be a little exclamation mark that says I have to let my finger off the halfway point and then back down to load up the buffer again. So I can hold my finger there uh, for 60 seconds, let it go, reload it, let it go, reload it uh, as many times as I want until I see that hummingbird leave. That's when I'm gonna wanna push this all the way down because then it'll record everything that's happened before that with my pre-release capture and as I'm holding it down, it'll then capture everything in real time going forward. Pretty cool setting. And let me show you how I have this set up on my Z9. And it might be fairly similar uh, to what you might have on your Canon, Panasonic, Fujifilm uh, back home. One, I will turn on my camera, go to menu settings. Go down into custom settings here, go to shoot display, and then go down to D4 here, where it says pre-release capture options. I'll make sure that it's not on off. It might be default on off. I set that to one second because I want the max amount of time before I push down the shutter. And then I set this one to max, which means that if I'm holding down the button, it'll just continue to shoot until my buffer fills up or I release my finger. Here, this will just shoot two seconds after, and then the camera will stop. So I set that up. Now I got pre-release that's happening, and you can see the icon right here. Now, if I'm shooting raw, if we go over to here, and I'm shooting 20 frames per second, that little icon, the pre-release capture icon is gone, which means I can't use it. Hopefully, Nikon will update it so that you can shoot raw with that pre-release uh, capture um, for, for raw images in the future. So I switch between 20 frames per second, which is what I like to shoot for raw, and either 30 all the way up to maybe 120 frames using the pre-capture. And I could show you some of the images using that. And it's pretty neat being able to kind of go back in time. How it's engaged is you hold down the trigger finger halfway that's the reason why I have this as my focus button. This is now hold down halfway. Green light comes on indicating I'm pre-capture setting is, is, is filling up the buffer with the images. As Soon as I push down fully, it'll then capture everything up to a second before. And as long as I'm holding this down, it'll keep capturing until my buffer is held up. So with the Nikon Z9, I shot out in the field 30 frames, 60 frames, and 120 frames with this pre-capture setting. And here are some of the photos that I captured.
you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps out the channel. And if you aren't subscribed, think about subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video, wherever that may be. It'll probably be about eagles and eagles' nests. And uh, I hope to have that video out in a few weeks. See you then.